in this video lecture we will be discussing few more examples which are based on the definition of a metric space so till now we have read what is a metric space few examples were based on metric spaces so in today's lecture what i'll be trying to do is i'll be defining a metric on the space of complex right so my target is that i am going to define a d on the space of complex number on complex numbers right so my set is a set of complex numbers but before that we should know few properties of a complex number so what is the motivation behind defining this metric space because we know few properties of a complex number for example if somebody asks us what is the absolute value of a complex number right so if z is any complex number where z is nothing but x plus iota y right so what is the modulus of this z so everybody knows this that this is the square root of x square plus y square that is how we calculate the modulus of a, a complex number right where x and y are any real numbers after this we observe some more facts about the absolute value of a complex number like what is the first fact which i can observe from here is that if you calculate the mod of z or you calculate the modulus of z conjugate this is one and the same thing you can easily verify because x plus iota y is z right and what is the mod of this this is nothing but square root of x square plus y square and similarly now if we are talking about uh, z conjugate that is x minus iota y so what will be the modulus of z conjugate that is again nothing but x square plus y square so this thing holds trivially right and moreover you can e easily verify some other results like mod of z square is nothing but z into z conjugate right where z is any complex number you can again verify uh, this result very easily because x z into z conjugate what is z x plus i y what is z conjugate that is x minus i y so just apply a square minus b square so this is x square minus iota square y square and what is iota square that is minus 1 so this will be x square plus y square and what is mod of z square so we know what is mod of z that is nothing but square root of x square plus y square so if we are talking about mod of z square this comes out to be x square plus y square oh. similarly you can easily see this that real part of z is always less than or equal to modulus of z right and similar result hold for imaginary part of z is always less than or equal to mod of z right so these are some very simple remarks so fourth remark is that if we have two complex numbers z and w so if we take the modulus of this so this can be written as mod z into mod w where z and w are any complex numbers so this property even holds you can easily verify by taking two complex numbers right and then the fifth main property which which i want to prove in actual is a triangles inequality that is if we have any two complex number w and z are any two complex number so i want to prove that mod of z plus w is always less than or equal to mod z plus modulus of w right? for proof i am considering that if we have mod of z plus w square this can be written as z plus w into z plus w conjugate right using the above property because we know that modulus of z square is z into z conjugate so i am using this property because z is a complex number w is a complex number so their sum will also be a complex number right now you can just divide this now you know that a plus b conjugate is nothing but a conjugate plus b conjugate right so this will come out to be z into z conjugate that is mod of z square fine next if you multiply w with w conjugate that is w into w conjugate this will be modulus of w square fine again then we have z into w conjugate right plus w into z conjugate i think this step is clear up to now right now you can observe one thing from here right so this can be written as so this can be written as two times the real part of z into w conjugate now why this thing holds let us verify this why we are writing this thing because we can write it like z into w conjugate plus right z into w conjugate just uh, try to understand what i am doing here is that this is conjugate plus again conjugate because now when you open this this thing will be z conjugate into w conjugate or conjugate and this is nothing but w right so i have written this expression in this form right now we know that if z is any complex number if we add a complex number with this conjugate this is nothing but two times real part of this complex number right 
so that is the same property which i'm using here so this is any complex number right and this is a conjugate of this complex number right so this will be nothing but a two times a real part of that complex number so i think this step is clear to you now right now in the next step what i will be doing is so this thing will be definitely less than or equal to modulus of z square plus modulus of w square plus now z into now I'll just see this z into w conjugate that is a two times real part of this fine now what i am doing is this is a real part and using the property which i have already defined above that a real part of any z is always less than or equal to mod of z right so just use that property here so this thing will be less than or equal to twice the mod of z plus w conjugate so i think this step is clear now right now in the next step what i am doing is this is nothing but mod of z square plus mod of w square plus twice now you can just split this modulus into mod z into mod w conjugate right and we know that either you calculate modulus of w conjugate or you calculate the modulus of w they are one and the same thing so in the next step i'll be replacing it with modulus of w right now just you can understand this this is nothing but a plus b whole square so this is mod z plus mod w whole square so what i have proved here is that modulus of z plus w whole square is less than or equal to mod z plus mod w full whole square right now you can just take the square root and you can write it down that modulus of z plus w is less than or equal to modulus of z plus modulus of w so we have proved the triangles inequality in this case so now after proving this triangles inequality my intuition is that now if i am choosing any two complex numbers z and w are any two complex number and if i want to define a metric so metric is basically calculating the distance between the two numbers fine so between any two points to be more precise so the distance between the two complex numbers that is z and w if i define this as so if i define it like modulus of z minus w so using all the above properties and this triangles inequality you can easily verify that yes this this satisfies all the axioms of a metric space so this is a metric space you can easily verify this right so let us move moving on i'll be taking few examples so that we can quickly verify that whether this set forms a metric space or not so if example one that if we are given that d of x y is equals to modulus of x minus 2y plus y minus 2x so i want to verify is this a metric is this a metric the answer for this question is no it is not a metric space now why because we know a property in a metric space that distance between x and y is zero if and only if x is equals to y now if if you choose x and y to be one let us suppose let x and y is one so now you calculate the distance between one and one from the definition of matrix is it should come out to be zero right from the definition of matrix space but now let us check in this example now if you put the value of x and y to be one so this will be one minus two mod plus one minus two mod so this is nothing but a two so this is not zero this is not zero so hence it is not a matrix space similarly you can verify this example that if this uh, distance between x and y is defined as minimum or maximum okay of x y so this is not a metric is not a metric why because if we are checking let us suppose that firstly we are checking for max function right now take x and y as so take x and y as so let us take minus 3 and minus 2 right so the first property will violate the distance should be greater than or equal to 0 so this property is violated similarly if you are calculating for minimum and you just choose the same example so again the property is violated so this is not a metric spaces so till now we have discussed many examples regarding metric spaces discuss one more important example that is a metric on r square and the metric is defined as distance between so in r square we have tuples x1 y1 and x2 y2 is defined as right mod of x2 minus x1 plus modulus of y2 minus y1 now one let us try to understand what is the what what is the meaning of this metric right from a example let us choose a example first of all now if if somebody ask me that yes i want to go from a point let us suppose 1 comma 2 so this is a point p which is 1 comma 2 and suppose 
q is any other point which is x2 y2 and suppose we have coordinate 2 comma 10 right so let us see it through a graph so this is let this is be some 1 comma 2 right and here we have something right uh, q which is 2 comma 10 in r square usually we do not travel in a, along a straight line so what we do is we hire a taxi from a point p right and what i will tell to my taxi driver yes you go straight along this path right and once you are reached here so we, what is this point this point is 2 comma 2 now i will tell my taxi driver yes now go along, uh, straight along this path so that is how i will travel in r square right this so this is also referred as taxi cab matrix so taxi cab matrix and yes the motivation behind the definition of taxi cab matrix is the same person was sitting in a taxi and he used to go from his office to home every day in a taxi and one day he was motivated yes how can we calculate how can i define a metric on this way so that is how he has defined now you can easily verify that this met this will satisfy all the axioms so all the axioms are satisfied so, so in this part i just wanted you to understand the motivation behind the definition of a taxi cab metric similarly in r square we have some more examples like if we have a supremum matrix so you should there is a matrix called supremum metric and what is the definition of supremum metric that is it is generally denoted as d infinity right and in r square we have tuples x1 y1 comma x2 y2 and this is defined as the supremum of the modulus of x2 minus x1 right and comma modulus of y2 minus y1 again so this thing is supremum and inside the supremum we have modulus which is always greater than or equal to zero so the first property always holds that that is the distance between two points will always be greater than or equal to zero the second point that is the distance between the two points is zero if and only if the points are equal right so if i'm writing here x and y so what is my x x is a tuple that is x1 y1 right and what is y y is nothing but x2 y so you're gonna easily verify this this thing also holds right and similarly the distance between x y and distance between y x that is also true because here we have modulus right and similarly the triangles inequality hold up here because we have a mod uh, inside the supremum and for modulus we have already discussed in the previous video lecture the triangles inequality hold so in this case also this forms a metric so we have proved that supremum metric is also a metric space now before concluding this video lecture i would like to add a remark so how can we construct a new metric from a given metric right so already in the previous video lecture i have told you uh, if d is a metric space right so d upon 1 plus d is always a metric space right that is already we have discussed in a previous video lecture that if d is a metric so this implies d upon 1 plus d is a metric so that is the so what we are doing here is we are constructing constructing new matrix new matrix from a given old matrix so the first is that yes we know that this thing holds now let us define uh, some other for any lambda greater than zero so if i take any lambda positive and if we have d as a metric space is a ms metric space right now if i define a new metric as d1 which is defined as lambda times dxy so yes this will also be a metric space now i will leave all these up to you to check that yes whether it forms a metric space or not so i'm just writing these results you can easily verify they are very simple to prove right similarly if we have two metric spaces d1 and d2 they are any two metric spaces on the space of x right so their sum is always a metric so d1 plus d2 is always is also yeah is always a metric fine and similarly if d1 is a metric d2 is a metric right and alpha and beta are any two positive real numbers so combining these two property if i can write it down that if i am defining a new metric let me call it as d3 and if i am defining it as alpha times d1 plus beta times d of d2 of xy so the, uh, for alpha and beta greater than zero so this is also a metric space fine so you can easily verify these these all are the properties of a metric space now what about the difference of two metric spaces it may or may not be a metric right we cannot we can never make a statement that the difference is always a metric space 
it may or may not be but division is never a metric space right so much have been discussed about the definition of metric space what is the motivation behind metric spaces and how the various metric spaces are defined so you can you can try solving more and more problems and if you are facing any problems you can write it down in the chat box or you can join our whatsapp group you can visit the website www.nochalkacademy.com and uh, you can get into our touch on the telegram group or on whatsapp group and you can always write to us we'll be solving all your problems so in my upcoming video lectures we'll be moving further and we'll be discussing few more concepts so i hope you have understood this video lecture thanks for joining thank you